Well, hello. Uh, my name is John. I'm a student nurse practitioner here at the clinic. Hola, mi nombre es uh, John. Yo soy un estudiante de enfermería practicante aquí en la clínica. What's your name? ¿Qué es, uh, ¿Cuál es su nombre? Mi nombre es Wendy. My name is Wendy. Okay, what's going on today, Wendy? ¿Qué es lo que está sucediendo, Wendy? Tengo un dolor aquí. I have a pain right here. Okay, how long has that been going on for? ¿Y qué tanto tiempo ha sucedido esto? Um, creo que por tres meses, más o menos. I believe, like, for three months, more or less. Can you ask her if the pain gets worse if she me eats, puede, uh, or...? ¿Me puede decir si uh, su uh, dolor se empeora cuando come? Oh. Sí. Yes. Has she had any nausea or vomiting? ¿Ha tenido náuseas o vómito? Sí, también. Yes, also. Um, does she throw up every time she eats? ¿Se vomita cada vez que come? No, pero me da náusea cada vez que come. No, but I get nauseous every time I eat. Can you ask her if there are any types of foods that make it worse, uh, like fatty uh, foods, or if she has si, any uh, problems with her bowel movements, or, or um, grasosa, if it hurts all the time, or at night, de, or, uh, or anything like that? De para ir al baño si le duele durante esta en la noche. Um, bueno, estoy un poquito confundida porque está hablando bien rápido. Okay, I'm uh, confused because you are speaking a little bit uh, fast. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, disculpe. Pero sí, claro que me da náusea después de que como y a veces vomito. But yes, I do get nauseous whenever, uh, after I eat, and, uh, can I, you uh, ask, vomit. Can you ask her if she has any problems with her bowel movements? ¿Tiene problemas con su, uh, cuando va al baño a defecar? No. No. Any, has she had any surgeries before? ¿Ha tenido cirugías anteriormente? No, ninguna. No, no. Um, any other family members have this problem? ¿Algún otro uh, uh, familiar, uh, miembro de la familia ha tenido este problema? Pues yo le he preguntado a mi abuelita y a mi mamá y a mi tía a ver si ellos han sufrido well, de algo de esto, pero I've me han dicho my, que nunca. Uh, aunt, my uh, mother, my uh, grandmother to see if they've suffered from this, but they've told me no. Okay. Um, any weight loss with ¿Ha, this? ¿Ha tenido pérdida, uh, pérdida de peso con esto? Creo que un poquito porque como no me dan ganas de comer porque me dan ganas de comer y tengo miedo de que vaya a vomitar después de que coma. I'm not wanting to eat because I want to, uh, I get a sensation of vomiting after I eat. Okay, okay. Well, I think we should probably check out your gallbladder, which is in that area. We'll do some lab work and an okay, ultrasound entonces, of the gallbladder and we'll vamos see you hacer, back on Friday. Entonces vamos a hacer uh, un uh, examen de uh, vesícula biliar que está en esa área, eh, vamos a hacer uh, laboratorios y lo, la vamos a ver el viernes. Okay. Gracias. Okay. Gracias. Thank you. This video is meant to be used by student nurse practitioners who may be working with medical interpreters for the first time in a clinical setting. There are approximately 60 million people in the United States who speak a language other than English as their primary language. When these individuals interact with an English language dominant healthcare system, they are at an increased risk for medical errors related to miscommunications. One of the best ways to overcome a language barrier in a clinical setting is through working with a professional medical interpreter. We will discuss four key areas of well-researched best practices that student as practitioners should consider using when working with medical interpreters in a clinical setting. Introductions, or introducing the interpreter by name and role, can help identify for the patient who the interpreter is and that they are part of the healthcare team. Positioning the interpreter appropriately in the room can be helpful for maintaining the direction of conversation between the clinician and the patient. If the interpreter is sitting between the clinician and the patient, conversation can be directed away from the patient too easily towards the interpreter. Instead, having the interpreter stand behind the clinician or behind the patient can help the student nurse practitioner keep conversation directed towards the patient and encourage the patient to direct conversation towards the nurse practitioner. Conversational techniques such as using appropriate verb tense like uh, second person verb tense instead of third person verb tense can also keep the conversation directed appropriately from the clinician towards the patient. For instance, instead of asking a question, does he or she feel pain of the interpreter, the, the better way to ask a question is to directly direct it towards the patient saying, do you feel pain? When did your pain start? Another important technique uh, 
when speaking through an interpreter is to use short single idea sentences and to ask only one question at a time. And finally, evaluating for understanding is an important way that you as a clinician can know for certain that the patient has understood the information that you have tried to impart for the patient encounter. Simply having the, asking the patient at the end of the interview to repeat back the plan of care can be effective in assuring you as a clinician that the language barrier has been overcome by working with a medical interpreter. For the end of this video, we'll look at a health interview using some of these best practice techniques of working with a medical interpreter. Good morning, my name is John, I'm a student nurse practitioner. Mi nombre, Mucho gusto. Mi nombre es Enrique. My, um, nice to meet you. My name is Enrique. And nice to meet you. This is Mucho Wendy. Gusto. Este es Wendy. Soy Wendy. And she's an interpreter who, yo soy un intérprete. who will be interpreting with us today. Le va a interpretar hoy. What's, si going? Me disculpa, perdón. What's going on this ¿Qué es lo que está pasando con usted? Pues tengo una, una molestia aquí arriba. No sé qué sea. Discomfort up here. I don't know what it is. When did it start? ¿Cuándo comenzó? Empezó hace tres semanas. It started three weeks ago. Hmm. Okay. Have you ever had this problem before? ¿Ha tenido este problema antes? Pues no. Uh, me dolía antes. Uh, tenía piedras en el riñón, pero no se sentía como esto. No, before I had um, stones in my kidney, kidney stones, but I didn't feel like this before. Okay. Okay, okay. Have you taken any medications for this? ¿Has tomado algún medicamento para esto? No más he tomado a leave. I just taken a leave. Okay. Did that help? ¿Eso le ayudó? Me, me ayudó un poquito, pero no mucho. It helped a little bit, but not much. Okay, all right. Does there seem to be any uh, foods that make it worse? ¿Alguna comida que le empeore esto? No, o sea, no más. Uh, tengo ganas de vomitar a veces, pero no. No, just that uh, sometimes I feel like throwing up, but no, not okay. really. Anything that makes it better? Algo que le mejore? A veces nomás puedo quitar la, el alif, pero no mucho. Sometimes a little bit of alif helps a little bit, but not much. Okay, okay. Have you had any fever or chills? ¿Ha tenido fiebres o escalofríos? No. Okay. Have you um, lost any weight with this? ¿Ha perdido peso con esto? No, no he perdido. Uh, no, I haven't lost. Okay. Have you had any surgeries or operations? ¿Ha tenido alguna cirugía o operación? No, no he tenido. No, I haven't had any. Okay. All right. Well, um, sometimes when we have pain in, in this area and it gets worse with food, Algunas veces cuando tenemos dolor en ese área y se empeora con la comida, we think about the gallbladder. Creemos entonces que es algo relacionado con la vesícula biliar. There are tests that we can do um, in the lab with some blood tests or with an ultrasound. Hay exámenes que le podemos hacer en el laboratorio de exámenes de sangre o un ultrasonido. And that can help us know if that is the gallbladder causing you a problem. Y eso nos puede hacer saber o ayudar a saber si es que la vesícula biliar le está causando problemas. So we'll get you set up to have some of those tests today and then okay. see you back on Friday to discuss them. Le vamos okay. a hacer una cita o programar citas para que le hagan esos exámenes hoy y ya le vamos a ver otra vez para ver para discutir los resultados. Okay. Any questions? ¿Tiene alguna pregunta? Sí, le puede preguntar si uh, tengo uh, si tiene algo para el dolor más fu más fuerte. Can you ask um, if I, he asked me if I can ask you if you have something for pain that's stronger? For now, until all the tests come back, let's let's wait and try to manage it as you have been, and let's see what we're dealing with. Hasta ahorita dice por lo esperemos hasta que los resultados regresen para tratar de ver qué es lo que está pasando y luego uh, poder administrar lo necesario. Okay. Just to make sure that you that we've understood each other well, would you be able to tell me back kind of our plan for today, what what we're going to do? Solo para asegurarnos que nos entendimos cada uno. Dice puede decirme cuál es el plan y cuál es qué es lo que pensamos hacer. Sí, entendí que uh, me va a hacer uh, exámenes de laboratorio de sangre. I understood para, that you're going to uh, do some blood tests, some lab tests. Para checar si tengo algo mal con la vesícula. To see entendí. if there is something wrong with my gallbladder. Yes, yes, that's sí. exactly right. Good. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll see you Friday. Gracias. 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 Gracias.